Hello there and welcome back to Spain. Last time, well, we uh, ended the game with the War of Savoyard Succession, where basically Burgundy declared war on us, and this should potentially be interesting because I believe in theory that I can get some Imperial Authority out of this, so all in all, they're not just bad, but Burgundy does have some uh, pretty high-end allies in Bavaria, Poland, and Russia. And let's take a quick little look on military because I'm a little bit concerned about how many of those are actually Russians. So, 234,000 Russians and 160,000 Burgundies. They don't, don't actually have any more manpower, which is also quite interesting. But, uh, let's see, Austria has 100,000 men to uh, join into this war, which is also great. Bavaria, 50, Bo no, where's Poland? 55. So, basically, it should be uh, fairly easy. I'm pretty sure that Austria can, to some extent, handle both Bavaria and Poland. Especially if... Uh, if we make things work here, but the real thing that I'm currently a little bit concerned about is that I have 60,000 troops in India that should probably be sent home, at least one of these 20k units. But there are 20,000 Russians here for me to kill off, so uh, not really all bad. We'll have to, uh, have to figure out. I still don't know why I still have 20,000 men in Japan, but I'm probably going to fight there sometime, so I might as well just keep them there. I myself with Great Britain is potentially something that I will be doing now, considering that the Russians actually have a decent sized fleet, as it turns out. I did honestly not know that. But uh, now I do know we might actually have to do something about that, but for now we'll simply focus on winning against Burgundy and keeping, uh, I guess, Piedmont under control here. It's also quite tempting to uh, hand back some of these uh, French corps, if, uh, if possible, simply to weaken Burgundy, but uh, we'll have to see what we'll do for now. We'll simply wait, and hopefully we'll get into uh, into a, a uh, war with uh, with uh, with Burgundy here over their throne as well, because of the hilarious fact that Savoy had actually a trust tomorrow on the throne, and that is why I was uh, chosen as uh, as inheritor, even though I didn't actually have a royal marriage with them. So uh, that's kind of an interesting side note. Royal marriages can turn out into unions without you actually doing anything. I think it actually just has to do with keeping your prestige high, so in turn having things that boost that is probably beneficial. But uh, for now we'll be fighting this war and uh, it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. Probably also might actually have some more people joining in, Mecklenburg. So uh, it'll definitely be interesting to see how this actually turns out when uh, when we get to the end. Apparently my 12,028 ship lost against the, uh, the Russians, 17,000 and 24,000. But uh, that's not uh, that's not too bad. Hopefully we can keep my navy safe. It's not completely upgraded, and my biggest navy, the Civilian Part One, is actually just these ships now because I downgraded it. So uh, navy, not so much. It'll be interesting to see how this turns out. I'll probably show the uh, most interesting battles, but until we get into a battle, I'll just uh, get my troops in position, and we'll see how things work out. Probably have 60,000 troops on the border here. Probably try and hide in the mountains simply to get. Uh, get benefits more or less in terms that the Savoyans will then end up having to uh, having to attack in mountain regions and that will give me of course benefits in terms of uh, in terms of uh, defensive bonus. I think I'll simply keep these 20,000 men to get Bragg to actually siege this time. So with that in mind we'll just get right to it and see how it turns out. Forget about well screw that. Um, as you can see the battle already begun the first battle is uh, actually going on here, the first battle that I'm fighting is uh, basically the entire Burgundy army, or most of it, that currently is standing in uh, Tamil Patriots of all things. Um, we'll send these guys to deal with them, but yeah, the Russians will probably not be able to march into my lands here, so not really a scene that I need to keep an eye on, but as you can see, Burgundy attacked here in a mountainous region, Savoy, 45% of mount <laughs> 45% mountains, and they still were lucky enough to escape the the negatives by attacking in a mountain and they just got a crossing modifier and this could potentially turn very bad for me but as you can see they are, lose they are the ones that are losing troops not me and the battlefield is only so wide in this case and they do have terrain modifiers now due to people joining in apparently but it does actually show up here so this is definitely or should be a victory for me we have high morale we have high discipline we have well cannons to completely take the entirety of the back line and all that, so uh, it should be a victory, even though we are severely outnumbered. So uh, we'll see how uh, we'll see how things work out here. But as I said, probably a victory. Rebels killed, good. 
But uh, I'll just uh, I'll just allow the battle to rage. I probably won't actually add any more troops to it. There are some troops here that we could potentially add, or my vassals should add. But they are apparently running out or running away into the safety of this smaller army here, just for the sake of fun. So uh, that's kind of ridiculous. But they are losing troops, not we. And uh, it's their manpower that are being whistled away, not ours. So um, we'll see how the battle actually how the battle actually there ends up. Here is another reason why I do love the Austrians. Maximilian the First, 362, three general, and he's currently in charge of our well army in the mountains, and that should definitely secure that this will be a complete and utter de defeat for these guys. As you can see, they are losing, they are losing men rapidly here. That is thousands of men every day vanishing, and as you can see here, a huge win here. The uh, Enemy lost about 120,000 troops compared to us, almost just lose, losing about 30. 4 to 1 in uh, kill death ratio for those of you who wanted to know. And they also gained 2.4 uh, <laughs> 2 of uh, war exhaustion. Not to mention the fact that this result alone gave 25% war score. And as you can see, the war is virtually over. There's no real reason for me to continue this. There aren't really anything that I really want. They're beginning. Burgundy they do have a very, very, uh, very low stability. They don't actually have any uh, ruler problems right now, which also could be kind of weird. They have a Regency Council, so that's probably why. I'll actually keep this going till the Regency Council is done, and that is due to one simple thing. I want to actually check if uh, to check if uh, by waiting for basically the Regency Council to. Uh, to uh, get done here, if the, I can actually claim that throne afterwards and then take it in this war. If I can do that, then I'll definitely be doing it, but uh, we'll see how it works out. Hopefully, I can do something like that, but I do seriously doubt it, so we'll figure it out soon enough. Unfortunately, I can't actually claim the throne now, but as I said, the war is virtually over. There's no reason to uh, to continue this, so I guess we'll just go ahead and make the PC love we want here. And I'll basically be just hurting them a little bit here, Barry and Bourbon. Will become French promises again. Why? There's a simple reason for this. First of all, I don't care if France gets a little bit stronger. It would be beneficial. Also, having a weak uh, Burgundy is definitely also beneficial to me. But also the fact that by doing this, I will be getting a win war, and also I can probably get my relationship with France high enough to actually get alliances and, to some extent, uh, uh, military access. So when I actually end up in war with Burgundy again, I'll have a longer front line here to actually stand troops on and siege, but also Burgundy will have a much, well the front won't be as wide, so it'll be easier to defend myself if France is not a participating member in the war. So we'll go ahead and send them on, and that is basically the end of this war I think. My king, Burgundy accepted a generous peace offer, Burgundy will give Corp Bourbon to France, buried to France, and with that the war is over. A little bit anticlimactic I might believe, but uh, it's better than nothing so I can live with that result. But for now we'll just get our guys home and then we'll get uh, get back to doing things. Declare join. Yeah, we'll declare this one. Game 5 mercantilism is definitely uh, helpful. I'm also very tempted to take this one but uh, trade efficiency, embargo efficiency, better relations over time, not really that tempting anymore. Um, probably have to invest a little bit in the people guys. They do. I wish you could actually just have a button spread evenly or invest evenly among all members or the ones that you don't actually own or will get that would that would save me for a lot of micromanaging but as you can see I'm actually low okay this has got to be the most hilarious bug ever I'm low in war enthusiasm and that is because of the relative strength of alliances they have one ship that's right they have one ship and apparently this has to be uh, this has to be a modern day sub, nuke sub, to be uh, get my war enthusiasm that low. So that is quite hilarious, but I guess it's just a bug from starting the war in uh, uh, during the last session, but I can deal with that. Burgundy War 1, Savoy is now mine through a union. That should actually make them vote for me. Well, they will sooner or later. So... Uh, We'll probably have to release one of these guys once more, but that should be enough to uh, to actually be able to proclaim a Kaiserum, and then we uh, we're basically just not too far away. And as long as I can keep Austria in uh, in the happy place, I'll have them as my allies too. So we'll just go ahead now get that. Uh, probably take Bagra Bragranka. 
or something so I can vassalize uh, Portugal next time this time and hopefully get it done. So uh, we'll see how this turns out. Is that enough? 36 then yeah 100. It should be fairly perfect. Of course it's a risk but uh, they shouldn't get any anything that will boost it. We'll take their money as well just to be on the safe side. So hopefully this will uh, this will work out to my advantage, but it probably won't. That is usually how these things work. Twenty-one months. That was very very fast, but I won't complain. Let's see here. Uh, establish Spain in the Spice Islands. Continue the Reconquista. Well, I should just take this one. Conquest uh, against the Bella and both of them helpful. And with that, I guess we'll just also uh, um, try and get my fleet built this time without it getting crushed. We'll uh, get back to that, and we'll also get back to trying to get these guys to do what I want. So uh, we'll see how that turns out. Persia just left the military coalition against me, and I'm really tempted now to simply go for a no cast spell I war. Simply because they do not have any allies, and uh, Baluchistan does have some, uh, some cores that I can benefit from three cores that I can simply hand over and I'll probably also take two more promises and sell to them so uh, we'll just go ahead and do that 40,000 troops should be enough to deal with them so we'll go ahead take those two stability hits we'll also damn it I thought I had enough to boost it back up but I apparently didn't have so we'll just do the, that instead but as you can see it's not really that much of a uh, of an issue the only problem right now is that I did not pay attention to what Ashanti was doing and they currently have some serious rebel issues. These are Mali Patriots that have been sieging these so uh, we need to re-siege them ASAP and that is currently what is uh, what is happening now. I was considering sending some extra troops to help but it seems like uh, it won't be necessary luckily enough. So uh, we'll just keep on building the navy and our troops uh, reinforce and then we'll now focus on fighting Persia and take uh, Take back these three along with a couple more provinces to Baluchistan so I can annex them uh, annex them too pretty soon. I'm also very tempted to try and get myself into war with Nagyo soon. They are still allied with Delai and Delai are still not in collision against me. So Assam will definitely join in but uh, what well, Delai actually vassal them or something since no they're actually allied. So apparently anyone who joins the war that already is in a collision will actually drag in the rest of the collision. Which kind of is annoying, but uh, I guess makes sense. But for now, as I said, what with Persia here, they only have... Wow, they don't actually have that many troops either, so it should be a uh, should be a fairly easy, straightforward war. We'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. We are still ahead on the military aspect of things, so we'll take the Engineer Corps. Leader Siege plus one. This would have been helpful when I was trying to siege those... Uh, those uh, or the march that the Portuguese has, but uh, it will be definitely be helpful now. We'll also be moving a lot more troops into the uh, into the area, in, uh, well, into Persia, and that should be enough to uh, to secure our victory here and the uh, the things we want. So it'll be interesting to see how how much we can actually get. Philippe has tried to die. Let's pray for his soul and hope for a new heir. Isabel or Francisco? This is kind of a troublesome because I believe that the heir can't actually be a woman. So let's hope that Francisco is the heir at three three two, rather than Isabel. So, no, it's actually Isabel. And that is kind of a troublesome situation for me because that ne means that I need to speed up and get the uh, the next one rather rapidly. And the best way of doing this, I believe, is to release another nation. But I'll have to wait until I can actually annex these guys before I can release them again. And I don't actually feel like releasing someone else. So potentially, yeah, I could end up in a ton of trouble. 5th of January. So five more years until I can annex them. But hmm, this definitely has to be considered. I believe that the reason is no. Let's see here. How would this actually work? Let's see here. I'm pretty sure I would actually lose it, but we'll uh, we'll take a chance and wait. We'll see how it turns out. National Bank. The establishment of a bank has given us a reputation of seriousness and rel reliability. It has also allowed our government a much greater flexibility in raising funds for warfare. National loans add, I guess we'll take it at 24. Because, well, we do have a lot of money and we'll take it at 12, I guess. It should be fair enough. 
again, allow me to lose 5 inflation, I'll get a point stability, and all in all, it's just a uh, positive thing for everyone. So, as you see, a Persia is almost uh, completely dis destroyed, defeated. We'll be taking back those three cores, and we'll also be taking two more provinces that I will be... Uh, that I will be handing over to Baluchistan as soon as I actually get them. But uh, I'll have to wait a little bit. I'm also very tempted to go ahead now and actually declare a war on uh, on these guys too, straight from uh, straight from the get go. They do hold one of the Baluchistan cores, but uh, I could potentially simply do this with rebels too. Once this is actually done, those 22,000 men will actually become fairly useless unless they actually get a a uh, a military axis from uh, Baluchistan, so it'll be interesting to see, but for now we'll uh, just leave it here. It'll be also be kind of annoying because I believe Isabella can't actually, or Isabel can't actually take the uh, the throne of the Holy Roman Empire, so I need to sort that out as quickly as possible by making it uh, hereditary. So, uh, could potentially end up having some sort of a speed bump here, but hopefully it, uh, it won't come to that, we'll see how uh, We'll see how it turns out. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment, praise, criticism, anything you feel like. And I hope to see you around next time. Bye.